Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Fuse. This game will self-destruct in 10 minutes. Wait, what? This was sent to me by Renegade Game Studios and is designed by Kane Klinko. Security alert! The hull has been breached. Intruders have made their way onto your ship. Their goal? Total destruction. More than 20 bombs have been detected on board, and the countdown has begun. Your elite bomb defusal team, BDT, has been called upon to neutralize the threat. Does your group have what it takes to work through the intricacies of the bombs and defuse them in time? You'd better get moving, because this game will self-destruct in 10 minutes. Let me show you how to play. So in Fuse, you've got two types of cards. You have the bomb cards, and these are bombs that you try to defuse with different patterns on them. Um, and they give you different amount of points. And then you have Fuse cards, and that's what these are. Shuffle the bomb card deck and deal two cards to each player. Each player places their cards face up in front of them on the table. If the first card a player is dealt is a 3, 4, or 6 point card, then the second card must be a 1 or 2 point card. So you have to deal cards until this is true and otherwise reshuffle unused cards back into the deck. Next you deal bomb cards face down into a deck according to the number of players and the difficulty level you wish to play. Here you can see a list of that. So if we did a, let's say, 2 player game on training mode, we would need 17 bomb cards. All the other cards go back in the box. Now five of those cards are dealt face up uh, in the center of the table in a line. Six random fuse cards will get shoveled into the bomb deck, and that deck is placed face down next to the five cards. 25 dice are inside this bag. As you can see, they're all different colors and have numbers on them. They all get placed inside of here. The first player takes a bag of dice, and you are ready to play. Now, this is a timed game, and it literally takes 10 minutes to play. So you have to have a timer, whether it's a phone or just a timer. I don't know, whatever you got. Uh, you're going to set it for 10 minutes, and then you have to try to defuse all the bombs. Each bomb card requires a different combination of dice in order to defuse it. So the player with the bag of dice reaches in and draws out a number of dice equal to the number of players in the game and rolls them. Let's say we were doing three players. You would take out three dice and roll them. Now each of the players can take at most one of these dice, and players must communicate to work out how to best distribute the dice. There are different rules for two-player games and solitaire games. In a solitaire game you draw three dice, in a two-player dice you draw four dice, and each player just take two. Uh, I'm just going to explain the basics for a three-player game, but this game is possible to play solo as well. If a player draws too many dice out of the bag, he must return them to the bag and draw them again. If he draws too few dice, just take out more dice till you have the correct number. Uh, if there are not enough dice in the bag to draw the required amount, draw what is remaining and continue playing. If there are no dice in the bag left, then you lose the game. So the players take their chosen die and put them on a matching icon on one of their bomb cards. Any dice not taken by a player must be rolled. Other than on stack and pyramid cards, which I'll get into later, dice can be placed in any order. For example, on a card where you have, let's say, uh, red, two, black, six. You don't have to start with red. You can put any of the dice on any of them as long as it fits what's on the picture. So this number in the top right corner represents the uh, number of points you get at the end of the game for defusing this bomb. And it also represents difficulty because the higher the number, the more difficult the bomb will be to defuse. This one is pretty simple. You need a red die, a dice with a two, a black die, and a die with a six on it. Very straightforward. This is a stack bomb. Some bomb cards require that the dice be stacked on top of each other. So stack cards are cards that have this blank white space, and then they have an arrow left to right. And these work as any other bomb card, but you have to place the dice physically on top of each other. It'd have to be in order from left to right, so blue first, then black, then red. If you do that, the bomb is diffused. If a stack or pyramid falls over for any reason, all dice are returned to the bag, because diffusing bombs is delicate work. This is a pyramid bomb, and they're similar to stacks in which you have to put dice in specific orders, um, but there's a bit more leeway with this one. Um, as long as the top dice and the bottom dice match the uh, prerequisites, um, it doesn't matter which dice you place first on the bottom. So this one needs two black die on the bottom and a die with a one on the top. So if I had that, two black die, and let's say I had a yellow one, Bam, that is a, well, I messed that up, but if I had not messed that up, that would be a successfully diffused bomb. So yeah, after each player rolls their die, each player has to try to take one of them. If there are any die that are not taken, they must be rolled again as a punishment, and each player must take one die from their bomb cards uh, and place it back in the bag. Uh, and the chosen die must match the color of this die or the number rolled. So if I if I had a three on one of my already existing bomb cards or a yellow on one of my existing bomb cards, I would have to remove it 
as a penalty. Now, if that die is underneath a stack or a pyramid, you don't have to destroy the stack or pyramid. Those will remain safe. So communication is key, because as soon as these dice are rolled, you have to go, okay, I'll take the blue one, someone else take the yellow one, someone else take the red one. You have to communicate that fast, because if you don't, you will be penalized and start losing the die from your bomb cars. If you ever have to reroll more than one die, each die is rolled individually and resolved in order. Now, if you match all the requirements on a bomb card, the bomb is diffused. Follow these steps, remove the dice from the card and place them back in the bag. Place that completed bomb card off to the side, face down. Choose one of the face up bomb cards from the middle of the table to replace your card and then replace the bomb card you chose with a new card from the deck. Now inside the bomb deck are these fuse cards and these have either a die number on them or a die color on them. In either case, all players must return one die of the matching number or color from their bomb cards to the bag if possible. So I draw this four fuse card. If you got a four die on one of your cards, you gotta put it back. So these are kind of similar to re-rolling for punishment. Uh, they mess up your, your already existing bomb cards. So if you've rolled your three die and you've allocated a die to each player or re-rolled them, uh, you pass the bag to the next player and they roll three die as well and you continue on for the remainder of the game. If you ever have an incorrect die placement on a bomb card, then the entire bomb card must be cleared and all of those dice are placed back in the bag. The game ends in a player victory if you successfully defuse the required number of bombs determined by your difficulty level before the timer runs out. Once the last bomb card is taken from the middle of the table, stop the timer and the game ends in victory. So that means you don't have to clear every card in front of you. As long as there are no more cards in the middle, then you win. There is an insane level of difficulty where you have to clear all the cards from the middle and all the cards in front of you, but uh, that sounds like uh, it's miserable. But you might like that if you're uh, uh, a masochist. So the game ends in a player loss if the timer runs out after 10 minutes before you defuse all your bombs, or if you ever run out of dice in the bag. At the end of the game, players will total their score and record it on the BTT log. Uh, 10 points if you won, 1 point per full 10 seconds left on the clock, uh, the total points shown on all the bomb cards, and 2 points for each fuse card activated. There are also other types of setups you can do for the game, I'm not going to go into those, but I am going to go into some of the other cards that you can possibly pull out. This one's a math equation, so that means it can be any dice minus any dice, but it has to equal 2. So 6 minus 4, 5 minus 3, doesn't matter but you have to match in a mathematical equation. This card here, this dice has to be red or black, and this has to be a blue die or a two die, but the totals on the dice have to equal seven. This one's a tricky one, it's a stat card. The color doesn't matter, but each dice that you place has to be bigger th uh, in value than the one before it. So two, three, five, six, for example. Here's a card where every dice has to be a different color. They can't be uh, the same color. This card means in the stack that the first, second, fourth, and fifth dice can be anything, but the third dice has to be a yellow one. So as you can see, there are lots of different types of bombs with um, all sorts of requirements and difficulty levels. Um, so there's a pretty mixed bag in terms of requirements. So you've got 10 minutes to defuse all the bombs, and that's the game. This game is intense, frantic, and fun. Uh, it's an extremely simple setup. Set out the cards, grab the dice bag, take out some dice, start rolling, put them on cards, go as quick as you can, 10 minutes, here we go. I like how easy it is to learn, and the symbology on the cards is pretty clear. Sometimes it can be a little confusing, but once you start going, oh wait, this card means it can be a blue or a two, or this means it's a stack, um, then it's pretty straightforward. Uh, maybe like a couple cards are a little a little tricky to look at, but if you can just figure out logically what's going on in the picture, you can pretty much start placing dice on there as quickly as possible. There is a free app that you can download and it, it has like a music and sound effects and honestly it actually added a lot to the experience. Uh, it's free so I, we were like, we'll try it both ways and it does add a sense of urgency. I think it's cool that games, some games do this where they have like an app to enhance the experience for free. I wouldn't pay for it, but if it was a free sound effects music, that's that's pretty cool. It made you really feel like you were diffusing bombs and time was running out. The only real downside to the game is that luck is obviously a factor. You are gonna get screwed because, you know, you're rolling dice. Dice are random, uh, so sometimes you're just, you can't get the right colors or numbers out. Uh, it's unavoidable with dice, but the game tries to mitigate it by advising you to keep one easy bomb and one hard bomb in front of you at all times. If you try to do two difficult bombs at the same time, you're going to be in trouble. But if you can balance that, then usually you're going to be able to put dice on. Um, and also, the game is 10 minutes, so it's like... Even if you have like a bad luck game one time, I mean, you're done in 10 minutes. That's what I like about this, is it's so quick to play and you are you can play like several rounds in one sitting. Yeah, as a real time sort of exciting co-op game, it works super well. You find yourself just like, kind of like going to your friends like, come on, okay, I need a red die, do you need a red die? Okay, I'll give you the red die. Okay, I, oh, I need a four, if, if, give me the four. Just really quick, you start to like develop your team teamwork and your team building. 
Uh, it's really, really cool, and it makes you really feel like you are uh, diffusing bombs when the time's running out. So, and just despite the luck factor, uh, I think it's worth it to play what I think is a very intense and exciting 10 minutes, only, only 10 minutes co-op experience.